Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we will discuss about the periganglioma. What is periganglioma? Periganglioma is the tumor of periganglia. These are the clusters of the new endocrine cells which are dispersed throughout the body. So embryologically, they arise from the neural crest cells regardless of their location, wherever they are located from foregut up to the hindgut they all have the similar type of histology, which we will discuss further about the type one and the type two cells. So the tumor or the periganglioma, which arises from the adrenal medulla, it has a different terminology and it is called as the pheochrosatoma, but it still it has the similar type of histology and the similar type of uh, staining pattern. And the periganglion cells, in majority, they are located around the big vessels in the body and around the autonomic nervous system. So the most common site is the carotid body site, which are located around the carotid vessels. In this cartoon picture, these are the periganglion cells, which are located around these big vessels. Physiologically, they perform the role as the receptor sensations of like they, they can detect the amount of blood gases such as carbon dioxide or the uh, amount of oxygen in the blood so they can uh, stimulate the uh, respiratory system accordingly and they also plays the role in the endocrine such as they can release the catecholamines and when the tumor is functional they can release high amount of catecholamines and they can cause the carcinoid syndrome. So uh, in terms of categories, these are uh, mainly located around either the parasympathetic or the sympathetic system. So the parasympathetic system, when they come, the paraganglioma arises, they are commonly located above the thoracic inlet, especially in the head and the neck region. In terms of their endocrine function, they are usually non-functional. So when there is an periganglioma, if it is increasing in size, so they will mainly have the uh, mainly have the consequences of the compression symptoms. Reversely, while the sympathetic system, the periganglioma arises either in the below the thoracic inlet, which commonly includes retroperitoneum, thorax, or pelvis, and in these region they are majority of the time they are functional, they can release catecholamines and then can cause the carcinoid syndrome. It is very rare that the paraganglioma arises independently. Majority of the time they are, are along with the various other syndromes. So the common ones are the succinate dehydrogenase mitochondrial complex, which is the most common mutation around 20% of the time. This enzyme mainly plays a significant role in the Krebs cycle and in the electron transport chain. And it has the further subunit like A, B, C, and D. And the most common thing is that the B subunit is most common and the A is really rare. And it has been seen when the periganglioma uh, arises and there is a mutation in the SDH, the tumor is commonly has the malignant potential and it is multifocal. While the other two other syndromes, along with that periganglioma, are the carnage triad, which, uh, which includes gist, pulmonary chondroma, and the periganglioma, neurofibromatosis type 1, main 2A, and 2B. In terms of the cellular composition, the periganglioma cells are two types of the cells. The first, the center, is full of the type 1 are the chief cells and they are surrounded by the sustenticular cells or supporting cells, which is the type two cells. When there is a tumor in the periganglion cells, the type one are the chief cells from the nest or the lobules, which is called as a Zell-Bellin pattern, which we will discuss in the histology. So the Zell-Bellin is a German word, which simply means balls of the tumor. While in terms of amino histochemistry, the type one are the chief cells which are located in the center. They are mainly responsive for the endocrine function. 
they can release the catecholamines. So they are positive for the neuroendocrine markers. The common ones are the chromogranin, synaptophysin, neuron specific enolase, serotonin, neuroflamin, and the neural cell adhesion molecule, which is also called as CD56. While the sustenticular cells are the supporting cells, which are around, around the periphery, are S100 positive. These cells are hard to see on the HNE, so these can be beautifully stained with the S100. While they are negative for the cytokeratin markers, it is very important to remember that all the periaganglioma are negative for the cytokeratin, and it is the main. Uh, it is the main IHC or the main stain which can differentiate it from the other neuroendocrine tumors such as the carcinoid tumors which arise in the appendix or the carcinoid tumors which arise in the lungs or in different locations. Those tumors are positive for the cytokeratin while the periganglomas are negative for the cytokeratin markers. In terms of macroscopic features, these tumors are commonly well circumscribed. They are rubbery to form in nature. They commonly have a capsule or a pseudo capsule and on cut surface, they appear very thin pink and these are very hypervascular tumors. And we will uh, discuss and see the histology that how much they are hypervascular and their size ranges from two centimeter to up to 10 or greater than 10. And when these tumors are accompanied with the SDH mutation, their sizes increases more as well. So this is the histology of the periaganglioma. So on this low power, we can completely see that the tumor is completely covered by the capsule and the tumor is very hypervascular. If we go on the high power, we can clearly see that the tumor has the nested or the lobular appearance and it is forming these ball-like pattern, which is known as a Zellbellin pattern. And the center cells are the type one, are the chief cells, which mainly plays a role in the formation of the catecholamines, while the surrounding cells are known as the sustenticular cells, which can be stained with S100, while the type one are the chief cells can be stained with the uh, synaptophysin, chromogranin, CD56, and few other new endocrine markers, which we described earlier. If we go on further high power, so if we describe the uh, cytological features, it is very common, which we have seen in the neuroendocrine cells, that these cells have a salt and pepper type of appearance of the nucleus. So what is salt and pepper appearance is there, there is a nuclear clearing and there is a stippling of the speckled pattern of the chromatin which appears dark, which is known as the paper, while the clearing of the nucleus is called as the salt. So this is salt paper appearance of the nucleus. It is very common in every neuroendocrine tumors, either it is a paraganglioma or the uh, neuroendocrine uh, tumor of other cells. While this stain is the chromogranin, which shows the type one are the chief cells are diffusely and strongly positive for those type of the stains. While this below picture uh, shows these S100 stains positive for these sustenticular cells, which are around the periphery of these type of the balls. It is very hard to see these sustenticular cells on the HNE, but they are beautifully stained with the S100. While in terms of prognostic factor, it is very important to remember that periaganglioma are mostly benign, but they, they become malignant when they metastasis. So the only malignant determination for the periaganglioma is the metastasis. Either there is no vascular, no capsular, or no art nuclear atypia can determine whether it's a benign or it's a malignant. Even the benign can invade the capsule, even benign can invade the vascular or the benign can have a nuclear atypia, but these are not included or these are not considered as a malignant feature. Only malignant feature is the meta So being a pathologist, there is no histological 
determination for tumor is being malignant and the common treatment for them is like uh, when they are benign or on one location the golden uh, is golden treatment is the surgery the other treatments are the immobilization and the radiotherapy so one more point how we will differentiate between the paraganglioma and the carcinoid tumors like a grade 1 and the grade 2 so the only marker which can be helpful to differentiate between these is the keratins. So as we described earlier, the paragangliomas are completely negative for the keratins, while the neuroendocrine, the well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor such as carcinoid or grade one or grade two, they are express they express positivity for the pan keratins, while the paragangliomas are always negative. The other less features which can which can be helpful to differentiate between two is that periaganglumas generally do not show or express the mitotic activity while opposite is while in terms of neuroendocrine tumors we we know that in the grade one or in the grade two there has been number of mitotic figure from ranging from one to two in the grade one while ranging a range of type two is from two to ten so these are the differentiating factors which can helpful to differentiate these two neuroendocrine tumors. So that is the end of my presentation. I hope you like it. Thank you so much.